Hello and welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. My name is Mitty Chang. I'm the president of this Rotary Club. Every week we bring to you a new program about technology, innovation, education, and humanitarian service. Um, I'm very excited that this week I'm able to introduce a guest speaker that was brought to us by one of our members, Andrew Ta. Um, our guest speaker this week joining us is Crystal Huang, who is the genius behind Cross Pollinators, uh, which is essentially kind of like a own private Facebook for community organizers. Crystal's going to do a much better job about explaining what that is and her origin story behind that. Uh, and really briefly, um, Crystal is a graduate from the University of California, Davis, go Ags. Uh, and <laughs> she spent um, several years working in uh, the environmental and energy industry. Uh, and she'll be telling us a little bit more about her story about um, her path to where Cross Pollinators is today. Um, without further ado, Crystal, if you'd like to take it away, please. Sounds good. So I think I'll start this talk by giving you a story of a journey of a person who's trying to look for purpose and what I could do, what, what she could do in life and actually serve a real purpose in this world. And that person is me, Crystal. So I started when, as most people, most of you, my my experience when you're in college, you didn't probably think about what I should major in. You probably already have some idea, but you want to understand what you can serve the world. You, I was, I have very little idea. I know that environment was important to me. I studied, the envi I studied environmental science and then got into atmospheric science, which was a lot more specific. Still didn't really know how exactly that would serve the world, but I thought, you know what, you just roll with it and things will happen. Even though I still was yeah, as a young mind still believed that there was a level of a purpose somewhere that needs to be fulfilled and it was really a big resistance for me to really be able to move forward and i was lucky enough to be able to follow just the heart and whatever landed on my lap and got a um a chain of interesting and exciting opportunity from working in resource recovery, which is mostly educating people on how to recycle and compost, how to eliminate waste in the world, to university laboratory energy management. And then I got a job in solar renewable energy. I was working at the largest solar panel maker in the world as a global analyst. So what I was doing was predicting the market, the pricing, competitive pricing, supply and demand, doing a lot of very high level work predicting what to go forward and um, then still back then I was like great I have a best job in the world that I could ever wish for it was wonderful but still wasn't quite sure exactly what I was giving into other than putting solar off the, all over the world even though when I get out of my solar bubble I still look around and say hey it's not even one percent of the energy production so we're still got a long way to go with climate change blooming which was obviously after a long time of looking at sustainability became a very big topic in my mind and how can we tackle this giant topic it obviously becomes very overwhelming and um, I after being in the hardware business of build helping solar panel maker we went I went downstream as do a lot of my colleagues because solar panels started to, started to get extremely cheap and now we wanted to go down and try to figure out how to install it and put it more onto people's roofs, millions of homes and factories and even deserts. So what I was working on it was interesting. Yet again, I have a very lucky life. Was we're running a startup incubator, supporting entrepreneurs who are solving problems that tr are trying to get more solar on the roof. Things like getting more um, customers for solar installers getting a better project management software for companies to be able to get project out more accurately and faster, a better financing system to get solar to be on the ground because solar is a very expensive system. So there's a lot of creativity in there trying to get more solar on the ground. And yeah, okay. So for me, I'm sitting there looking at myself. I'm supporting a lot of, like I feel like a coach supporting a lot of superstar athletes doing really great things on, on the field. And it, everything was fantastic. I feel like it was great. And I also got really lucky to get into a project started by the most successful solar entrepreneur in the country 
back then the person who founded a company that got bought by SunPower, which was, which I don't know if it's still, but the largest solar panel maker in the US. And so he was probably the most well off person from the whole solar, we call it solar coaster. It's like a roller coaster. So, but for him, a similar journey I went through, he really wanted to do something to the world, for the world. He was able to create a wonderful company to put a bunch of solar panels around the world to help electrify the world in a cleaner energy. But realize that it's not fast enough. People are still being stuck. We have the technology, we have the economics. People are still stuck at not moving forward. So he decided to do a very bold move of, thinking about what is something that inspired people the most. And the answer for him was a documentary film. So he came up with the idea of kind of like inconvenient truth, but convenient secret. The fact that we already have the solution in the world, but all we have to do is know it and get on it and just stop arguing whether climate change is real or not, because it doesn't matter. We already have a solution where we can build clean water, clean air, and clean food. Why not get to it? So the idea was have this giant expensive documentary and then couple with something a startup that would go with the documentary so a person could watch a documentary get inspired get inspired come out and actually turn their inspiration into real action through this startup so we tried to then figure out i started working with him on both projects then trying to figure out what exactly a startup would look like. It could be a service, it could be an app, it could be a website, it could be anything. So we talked to thousands of users, people who are alarmed about climate change but aren't doing anything. And obviously people who are really concerned about climate change trying to do as much as possible and trying to figure out what's the best way to get people to actually do real things. Because a lot of us, we're stuck in four problems. One. We know the problem is big. We don't know. We think the solution is not here yet. Two, sure, the solution is here, but it's too expensive. I can't afford it. And then three, like, oh, well, now I can afford it, but there's so many options. I'm getting paralyzed. It's too much choice. Then four, I actually spend the time to actually go through the research and do it and do it. I look around and I realize I'm the only one doing it. What's the point? So I stopped. And that generally is a journey that most people go through. So it becomes a really frustrating climate action journey for a lot of people and try to solve it. And that time my job was to try to deploy community, um, get people on board for this solution, whatever it was, it was kind of weird. The whole process was really very much putting the cart ahead of the horse. We haven't figured out what the horse will look like and I was building the cart of getting people on board to be dragged by this horse. So I started talking to a bunch of local communities who would deal with technology adoption or service startup adoption for us. We're basically tackling growth. And um, I started talking to a local community for the first time. Again, I come from a corporate background. Then I realized there are a lot of amazing community groups around the country. I only look at the United States, but it's, we don't, it's pretty obvious that it happens around the world that community members are doing amazing things on the ground in their neighborhood to do something for climate change. There are people who gather together to grow their own food. There are people who work together and help figure out how to catch rainwater or recycle, recycle water to be able to go through drought. There are people who actually collectively try to have solar for their own community so they don't have to rely on dirty fuel. There's a lot of different things that community members are doing. And the more I dig in, the more I realize that community is the answer to climate change. And not only is it to the answer to climate change, it's also the answer to the whole broken system we have in this world. Why? Because the reason why we're in, in, in this situation with climate change is that we have a system of extraction. We are turning a lot of, extracting a lot of natural resources, going, obviously we have natural resource depletion and we have too much carbon in the atmosphere. And without going into the detail, we are, we are treating the natural resource as something that we could take, just like how we're treating a lot of people as resources that we could take. And that's why we have women, in, we have gender inequality. We have social inequality, easily and we have a lot of problems from poverty all of that 
it all stems from the root cause of climate change, which is the way we treat each other and what is around us. And, with, and, and as the, the journey of us trying to figure out what this could look like, we look at a lot of, obviously climate change is not a real, real problem, and it's not a problem that only a few people like us are trying to tackle. Lots of people have figured out or try to figure out ways to do it, and they fail miserably. Why? Because it's a giant, giant problem for us to be able to grasp. It's a problem that, one, affects a lot of us, probably in the very long future. Two, when we actually implement a solution, it doesn't really, we don't see the effect right away. It's like treating cancer with food. It's really hard to, 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 to see the result of our effort. And, as, and for us as human who are very short, we have very short attention span. We tend, and especially in the, in the modern world where we have so much distraction, we tend to get lose sight of things. It's very hard to get us focused on one thing. And when we focus on one thing, we start to realize that the thing is not big enough to solve climate change and we give up. So anyway, I digress. Um, for all that lesson that I learned, we came up with a solution that does not involve community. So I left because I'm crazy. And now I try to figure out now that I found out community is an answer. And I'm not talking about just cool communities with eco villages that do sustainable living, but I'm talking about service, service learning people or people who are giving their time into building real bridges with each other through service and through giving of time there's a lot of people out there who are actually doing real change making real change without really knowing that they're actually creating they're changing the way we all are connected to each other and they're changing the way how we are connected to the world so i try to figure out like what's the best way for me to actually create a thing that would connect me to community leaders i live in berkeley which for a lot of people who know Berkeley is one of the most liberal cities in the United States. We have a lot of hippies. We have a lot of community-minded people. Community service is a big thing in Berkeley as well. I personally don't even know anything that's happening in Berkeley. Well, I didn't before, so I started to feel like a hypocrite. And um, then when I was trying to build this platform to get people to connect to community leaders, I started talking to a bunch of community leaders in our, our space and then a lot of people in Northern California too. The more I talked to them, the more I found out that they, unlike my assumption that I didn't even question, which was the fact that if you're working in a space, of course, you know everything about it. You know, I it was just like when I was in solar, I knew everything about the supply chain, the demand, all the way to my competitor. I know everything. To my surprise, people in the grassroots community, community-based solutions, they don't know anything about what other people are doing. They tend to reinvent the wheel all the time because they're working in silo. So, they, so then I realized the platform is really for community leaders and people who are serving each other. Because we end up seeing that a lot of volunteers volunteer their valuable time to get nothing but to serve. But the more you do the serving part without really seeing the real effect right away, you get burned out really quickly. So why not share and meet with each other with like an ally? Just like what Rotary Club is doing so well is an ally of community leaders and organizers helping each other out going forward. So then I built a platform called the Cross Pollinators, which is a place where change makers could come and contribute what they know so people don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Um, I'm gonna try to pull it up. But the idea is that when you have a place that you could share what you know about the um, the space that you're trying to serve, learn from each other much faster without having to reinvent the wheel constantly. Um, maybe a little bit right here. So this is the cross pollinators. We had just moved, pushed it to live in September last year, which was about four months ago. And the idea is that this is an open 
source platform that community members come in here and add resources. So we have community members who know a lot, who've been doing things, say, in Berkeley or in Tampa Bay, Florida, or in Beijing, or all around the world who can use this. Um, here you could go in. This is actually a button. It's not a search bar and trying to trick people because I realized that user experience design is a great way to get people to be aspired to do, to do things together. So on this, you can see here's a map and it's basically listing out all the resources that all our users contribute to uh, a common map. The internet's running a little slow because I'm running too many things at the same time. But be just because we just kind of soft launch it, we don't have a lot of data points in here. But the idea is that if you want to look for an intersection of a topic that you're interested in, or topics that you're interested in, say, for example, if you're interested in um, women empowerment and social equity, for example, and I could just hit search because I don't really care where it came from. Imagine what you would have done right now. You probably go on Facebook or Google to find an answer. But in here, what you could do is you can then find interesting organizations that you would never heard think of. Like Brown Girls Serve, for example, is my favorite example. Where Brown Girls Serve is a organization that's based in San Francisco. What they do is they teach girls in the underserved community, mostly brown girls and black girls, to surf the waves of San Francisco. And through the, the aspiration of surfing, the excitement of being able to stand on a board on this giant wave in San Francisco, it empowers these women to feel like I am not a victim and I can do so much more. And to be able to help them get out of the whole the ruts that they're in back in their own growing environment and because they're being so close to nature they understand the importance of climate change and this is a perfect intersection of women empowerment social equity and climate change resources like this is not something that you can find easily on facebook or google and but it could be easily found if you talk to the right org community organizer and so the idea is obviously to get community organizers to be able to put these organizations on the map and tag it right so we can all find the right partners to work with or the right um, organizations to volunteer with. We also have community events where it is contributed by members of the community. So we could find out what are the different volunteer opportunities or groups that we can partner with to build more things together. So. Anyway, to wrap this up, the idea of the cross-pollinators is that when it comes to changing the whole system in our world, technology is not the problem. We, we, yes, technology could be better, but we already have the technology to get to where we need to be. The problem is behavior change. And with behavior change, if I think that if we are in the world today where we can get millions of people to wake up in the morning and the first thing they do when they get a roll over from the bed before they talk to their partners sleeping right next to them is to grab their phone and look at facebook instagram or snapchat i think we can get people really excited about doing the right thing because they could create the right story around connecting with real people despite what kind of beliefs you have around the world what you believe in i believe that most people in the world all believe in clean water, clean air, clean energy, and a loving place to live in. So that's cross pollinators. Perfect, wonderful, Crystal. That was a. Oh, thank you so much for sharing about cross pollinators. Very excited to hear about this collaboration project you have going on. I I noticed um, from the website you guys have quite a few groups on there. Um, I was actually wondering, uh, first of all. Could tell us a little bit more about uh, the team behind Cross Pollinators. I know that you're definitely the, the mind behind it. Um, do you have uh, fellow collaborators that um, work with you on a high level um, or how does this work? Yeah, so so I, it's funny because I'm standing in between a really weird space of tech world and community organizing world, which is basically your, your world, Midi. But um, I, it's funny because when I talk to the tech people, 
tech people think, oh, it's a technology problem. They have their, their own understanding of how to solve the problem. And they want to impose that as a way to really solve it. But the community service, the, the community service, but grassroots organizers have their own idea without really understanding how tech world tech works. So I kind of just like kind of just stuck in between these two worlds trying to convince each other like what is a real solution? Like most people in tech don't really understand the idea of community organizing being a solution. Um, but a lot of them think that we need a better way to install solar or I don't really care about climate change. I really care about education for underserved community. It just takes a lot of time for me to try to convince both sides like they're kind of the same thing. Can we just, we just need a place for everyone to be connected. And um, it just takes a long time just to explain it. So I ended up just hiring an engineer to just build the prototype. It's a very, actually a very sh crappy prototype in here. It's mostly just looks for people to really understand what I'm talking about. So it had just, like I said, it just came alive in September. And right now, mostly working with organizers to see how they, it could make them feel better, um, make their work better. So I'm working with mostly network slash alliance-like organization who have a huge network of local groups that's doing really cool things. And they really want a way to be able to map out, say it could be an organization that focuses on um, social justice for Asian community in the, in the United States. And they have a bunch of grassroots organizations that's doing this. So here I can create a collaborative tool for you to do it. So it's mostly just kind of gauging, giving a prototype and seeing if this is something will stick or not and testing a lot of user experience. Um, thing, I mean, because the idea is that internet is great, we have a lot of knowledge up there, but sadly it's mostly populated by people who are tech savvy. People who are community organizers, they rather spend time in front of kids or at the garden. They don't want to be sitting in front of a computer trying to figure out how it works, but their knowledge is immense. Got it. And then so in the past, uh, I think you said four months that you've been running um, cross pollinators. Uh, what have you found to your experience that a lot of the community organizers use the most on the website? Um, I, I noticed you can, it seems like you can create groups on there and advertise your group and kind of message each, uh, other collaborators on there. Um, what are some of the, the key features you found that a lot of the organizers have uh, really appreciated? So because um, since the launch, we learned that we learn what works and what doesn't work and just mostly doing a lot of iteration. And we were able to use the two months of holidays to kind of revamp this whole thing. And now starting in January, we're kind of coming back with the new version to talk to people to do on board. So to be honest, we haven't really been able to get to see what really stick and what not. But one thing I do realize that events is a super important thing for these people. Why? Because in-person interaction is the most important thing for them. And um, yeah, so online is still something that's very interesting. One trying to crack, a lot of people still settle with Facebook group, but they hate it. And it's a lot of convincing to try new things with a group of people who don't like to try new tech things. Definitely. Um, what, what, how have you um, publicized uh, cross pollinators? Like how do you get word of it out there to the community? So right now, I don't, I, obviously there's never ready, but I don't feel ready enough for it to be out because I still need a lot of things to be tested to work. Uh, like I said, I want it to be so easy that people know, like old people or not tech savvy, people who are not tech savvy know how to use it without any question. So um, I'm mostly just doing a lot of user testing right now. Um, by user testing, that means talking with community organizers, most of them 70 to 80 years old, to get them on board and try to make sure that things will work for them. If not, just constantly iterate. It's like a, a lot of lean startup approach here to build a product for people who don't care for tech-related things. Sure. And when are you thinking... Um in in the next uh coming months or next few years that you think that cross-pollinators would get to a point where you're ready for kind of this public 
release rather than a closed beta then? Probably Earth Day. Uh, this yeah, so that's April 20th, yeah. Okay, wonderful. For 20 seconds, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> So that uh, sounds like uh, there's going to be a little bit more work uh, left in, into play. What do you think is going to be one of the biggest obstacles that you're going to face between now and when you launch? Um, uh, getting busy, busy community organizers' attention. Um, right now, we had just done a lot of ch new changes. So I'm still, I have a lot of meetings next week to talk with people to see what works and what don't. And we'll see, it's a lot of just waiting for reactions to see what, what will happen next. But I do want to say that uh, I don't believe that this tool is a solution. I believe that it's a support system that help real solution, which is the community organizers on the ground doing the real work. And what I strive for the cross pollinators to cross pollinators to become is to be a real support as, as supposed to be a homework for people. That sounds great. Uh, and then so um, cross pollinators is the main project that you've been working on lately. Um, beyond cross pollinators, uh, are there any other projects that you're currently working on um, that kind of uh, work alongside with the work you're doing, uh, working with community organizers? Uh, mostly right now, mostly just focusing on learning what community orga organizers need and how to make their work better. Um, I am, to be very honest, I am testing a hypothesis that I know community organizers always like to say that they love collaborating with other people. I'm currently testing the hypothesis saying that whether that's true or not. A lot of people like to be able to say that we want to be able to share and have a this whole kumbaya feeling of the commons, but I tend to see a behavior of the opposite, where ego gets in the way, which I don't blame them. These people are volunteers and they, get, they deserve any, everything in the world to make them feel good. But ego does get in a way where it feels, it becomes a territorial issue where, oh, you're teaching schools in my district and this is my, my kids, you can't touch my kids kind of kind of issue. It does come up, but um, right now I'm focusing, identifying the groups that are really, really want to collaborate with others and go from there because I believe that once you get a tra enough traction, people who didn't believe it will be willing to get on board. Wonderful. And then so for our viewers out there who maybe are community organizers in some form themselves, um, and you know, they're, they've watched uh, up until now and they're thinking, sounds like an awesome project, an uh, awesome platform that maybe I want to get involved with. Um, what are some things that you're currently looking for for cross-pollinators? Um, uh, I assume maybe so more users, but uh, you know, what else are you looking for? Um, I don't necessarily want more users. I want users who are using it. So if you are someone who lives in the Bay Area, please go on there. There's a lot of stuff in the Bay Area on it. And tell me, just look around and see if it's useful. If it's not, please let me know. If it is, let me know too, but, but I'm more interested to hear it if it's not. and. If you're outside of the Bay Area, I'm currently working with groups in the Bay Area in California and in Tampa Bay, Florida. So if you have an existing network of change makers and organizers who have lots of ideas for resources and um, calendar events, but you just need a really good tech platform to help you organize and visualize it, we could work together on making it happen too. I create landing pages to help organizations to actually have a community space for their members to work with each other as well. That's incredible. And, and is there a cost for community organizers who want to get involved? Nope, with? not at all. That's right awesome. now I'm just testing, trying to make it work and I'm trying to see what sticks. That's terrific. And so you guys heard it, um, heard it from Crystal. So everything's free right now. Um, at cross pollinators, so definitely a great opportunity to spread around um, and maybe use if you're thinking about it for your project. Yeah, and I look forward to co-creating with anyone who's interested. In. This is not mine. This is ours. That sounds terrific. <laughs> um, and on that note, um, we're gonna uh, finish our Q and A. Um, 
Chris, I'm going to turn it to you in just a few seconds for some final words. But before we do that, I do want to thank everyone for watching our program this week. Um, if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure that you check out the links below the video. We'll have a link directly to the Cross Pollinators website um, and any other links that Crystal suggests. Um, and we also um, recommend that you leave a comment at the bottom of the meeting and um, tell us what you thought about the program. Um, ask Crystal a question if you have a question for her um, or just let us know what is the next project you're going to be working on um, in your local community. Um, Crystal, turning it back to you for some final words. Yeah, all the great work that you guys are doing in this organization is amazing, and I'm sure you guys already know that. Please keep doing it, especially we need it more than ever right now. And um, if there's anything I could support with a tech platform like this, please let me know. And the importance of allies is more, I don't need to tell you this, but the importance of allies is more than anything we can all imagine. So please keep keep watching cool videos coming out from this group it's i'm sure it's very supportive and keep doing what you're doing thank you all for the service you're providing for the world really thank you all right and thank you crystal for your time thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys next week take care guys